All right, welcome everyone. Chris Petrie here. Thanks so much for coming by. I really appreciate everyone coming by and joining along. We're going to have a great time. This time here, we're going to do a beautiful, it's kind of like a cityscape. It's a really hot area. Maybe it's somewhere in the south, southwest. Maybe it's down south in Mexico, southwest in the United States. Maybe it's a, a place you kind of just, in your mind, you get creative and you think of like a really hot desert type feel and that's what we're going to do here we're going to have like a nice uh maybe like it's an old architectural uh place you can go and visit like uh you know uh, an old ruins site where there's old architecture and dome buildings and uh churches and things like that you know sightseeing get into that mood and then we're going to create this painting with that mood of going and maybe sightseeing to a place where it's hot it's like a desert lots of white sand kind of that warm feeling and this is what we have we created that feeling with this painting so join along with this have fun uh, you'll see here the finished painting is going to be really um, exciting I'll zoom out just a little bit there so we have our finished painting there and uh, you can work right from this finished painting right now or you can watch the video full through and see how we sketch it first and how we do all the steps going through the painting to get to the final look of what the uh, painting should look like. It's a loose, fun, free looking painting. It exploits the medium of watercolor, tons of washes, beautiful blue and warm, warm and cool washes in the sky, f flowing down the paper into the shadow areas of the painting. It has a really unified and really beautiful look to it. I hope you're going to try this one. Have a good time. And uh, we'll see you in just a few seconds. And we'll get started on the process of where we start and where we're going to kind of keep working through and towards to get to the final completion of this painting. Okay, so we'll see you in just a few. Okay, so we just saw the finished painting and now we're going to get started with the process here. Um, how are we going to create this wonderful free flowing painting with, uh, you know, little effort. We don't want to get bogged down with all kinds of, uh, you know, considering all kinds of design issues and everything like that. Sometimes we can just really just get some ideas down on the paper and just get the paper flowing with some beautiful uh, watercolor washes. Uh, first, we're always going to do our pencil sketching, so that's always our uh, modus operandi. We're going to always get our light pencil sketch first. On top of our light pencil sketch, we're going to get in our contour drawing, which we say always here on my channel. You'll always hear me say this, and I always mention this too uh, in the beginning of my videos. You know, please subscribe down below as we're getting started here. I'd rather mention it now so we don't slow down later. Um, if you're subscribing down below on the right hand side, then you're going to get all my videos, and we're doing Excellent videos here, week after week, month after month, year after year, everything watercolor. So whenever you're watching these videos, my videos, our videos, hey, it's going to be everything watercolor. It's going to be drawing, pencil drawings, and watercolor paint. And once in a while we use some ink and wash. We use some inks. We'll do some of those uh, actually in the near future. But we do those once in a while. But we do everything watercolor, so it doesn't matter if we're doing some beautiful landscapes, some seascapes, some boat paintings, flowers, figures, whatever it is, it's going to be watercolor. So if you're just watching these videos over and over and over, you're going to learn the terms, you're going to learn the methods, the techniques of watercolor. You're going to kind of see how we work. Here I'm just going to use a real simple palette. This is kind of like a, you know, like a, you know, very like five and dime type of watercolor uh, palette. Uh, this is maybe five dollars online. You can get a so once in a while I like to work with once in a while a nice simple This is a gel uh, You know kind of semi moist paints. These are those really soft Watercolor paints. They're like if you just spritz them like this a little bit You can hear the spritzer Okay, you hear that spritzer bottle and now in about 30 seconds We have really juicy beautiful paint to work with these are great Sometimes those other really hard paints, the really hard pack uh, paints that you get, inexpensive ones, they're a little tougher to work with because you got to wait a couple hours before they get soft. 
these here are soft right away, so you can work right away and get beautiful, rich, exciting color. So just a little tidbit of information if you're, you know, maybe you just don't want to go out and spend all that money on tube paints and have to worry about how do you take care of your tube paints and do you squeeze them out every time you do your paintings or do you put them in the refrigerator and all that kind of stuff. You know, if you're painting for 10, 15 years, I can understand you're going to really get into the details of watercolor. You're going to figure out all those little kind of like, you know, interesting details of keeping your paints just right and all that. But if you just want to have fun, enjoy the watercolor process, why not? You just get a nice inexpensive uh, setup. Some quick $5 paints here and you're, you're in business. A spritzer bottle and a couple brushes. Maybe we'll use a really uh, $5 uh, Simmons, uh, Simply Simmons brush. Or you can use, these are great too. I use these a lot for practice. Let me see if I can find my other, one of my other favorite brushes I always like to use. Here it is. Uh, Princeton, Princeton uh, Neptune, round brush, number eight round. Number eight round, uh, Princeton Neptune. Now this is fantastic. This one is um, maybe $5, $6, and it's, Beautiful point. Look at that point. Excellent point. So you can get really fine details with it as well as big, large washes. Same with this Simmons brush. This Simmons brush has a nice point. You can see that, right? They both have really great points, and these are both $5 brushes. And you can't go wrong with uh, uh, anything Princeton, ma made by Princeton brushes. I have at least maybe 10 or more Princeton brushes of different varieties and they're all excellent. Uh, and mostly, most of the time I get the uh, synthetic kind. So this is just little tidbits of information I like to kind of put out there. I know some of you were looking for those more m finer details. So again, uh, this is a Prang watercolor set and I have an extra one over here that I like to put online to show you. So this is what it looks like, Prang, oval, oval 16, and these are semi-moist watercolors. These give you gray colors, uh, moist, juicy paint. You spray, You can. You don't have to have any special care with this. You could leave this out all the time, just like this. You don't even have to close the lid. You can just leave this in your studio open, just like it is here. You know, it's real simple. You just open up the watercolor box. You can leave it open, just like this. And that's all you have to do. And then when the next time you're going to paint, you grab a spritzer bottle five minutes before you start painting, and you just spritz. Good, you're done, you're ready to start painting. No other worries. So there's no other setups and worrying about what you have to do. It's simple, straightforward. And this is my other older set that I have here that I've used. And, uh, and what's great about these two, you can set up the colors the way you want. Here you can see I set up all my reds, oranges, and yellows, warm colors over here. Then I start transitioning into my greens, greenish blues, blues, purples, and then you just have your black and white there for when you need some uh, opaque white or some really dark darks, so your blacks, those two there. But again, warm, warm transitioning into the cooler colors over here, like that. That's how I set up my palette this way. Whenever I'm painting, I know right away, where am I gonna go? Oh, I need a warm color, boom, I know right here, I'm going right on this side over here. Oh, I need a cool color, I know I'm going right there. And then I'm just looking, all right, oh, oh there it is, purple, or blue. So, once you memorize your palette, doesn't take long if you're using it all the time and you keep all your colors in the same position eventually you don't even you won't even think about it you'll be thinking about the most important thing which is your painting your washes on your painting if they're drying if they're not drying where are you going to work next what's your next step with your painting that's your focus your painting not your pa your paints so what i'm saying is keep your paints always the same order all the time and you're better off just doing it that way and again, you can take these out and reorganize them. Maybe you want, maybe you want your cool colors, like your blues. These are a little bit, I haven't used these in a while, so they're a little bit harder to get out, but you can take these right out and put them wherever you want. You can rearrange them. Maybe you want your cool colors over here and you want your warm colors over here. You would you can put it wherever you want your colors, you can adjust them. But the main thing is. <clears throat> Once you start using your palette and you get comfortable with it, try to keep it the same all the time. You know, month after month, week after week, year after year, try to keep your palette the same all the time. So we're going to get into this now. So I have some brushes again. I have a Princeton Neptune Round, number eight, synthetic brush. 
this one here, excellent brush, and then a number eight, or number six I should say, Simply Simmons round brush, and this is also an excellent brush too. These two brushes are really fantastic, and you can also incorporate maybe a uh, Princeton square brush. I have a Princeton square brush here, so you can see that's a flat brush for maybe square shapes and things. You can incorporate a nice square brush into your routine when you want. And again, these are probably around five or six dollars for, for this brush. Again, no major investments. If you're just, maybe, you know, you're into watercolors for a couple weeks or a couple months now, you don't want to, you know, probably spend a lot of money on expensive art gear. So you just use your simpler stuff. And then uh, we'll make do with that. Now we're going to take some this is uh, painter's tape you can get at the local box store. So if you have a Home Depot or a Lowe's, any of those big box stores, hardware stores, or your local friendly hardware stores, they usually have this painter's tape. It's really great. Look at that. It comes in all different sizes. You can get it in small, thin sizes. You can get it in wide sizes like this. What's great about this is it's so easy on the paper. It doesn't tear the paper up, really. So this really delicate paint, painter's tape that you get at the box stores, big box stores, they are, it's just phenomenal. You put it on and it comes right up and it doesn't tear up your watercolor paper. Some other of, uh, artist tapes and things like that can really ruin the paper and tear up your watercolor paper when you're done. So let's use this. It comes in different colors too, according to what type of tape it is. This is like your all-purpose painter's tape that a commercial painter might use if they're coming to paint your house and they're going to cover your moldings and cover some of your trim on your house. They're going to use this type of tape. So we'll use it here because it really works phenomenal. And it's uh, not that expensive either. One roll is maybe like $2. And we'll just try Okay, so we have that there. I'm going to try to just make that look a little better over there, like that. And then here we'll try to go underneath. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we're going to be right back. We just taped around our rectangle that we're going to paint within, and we'll be right back. All right, so we're getting back here. We're getting excited. We just covered all the little minor details, but sometimes you, we need those. We need some of you I know out there. You kind of you comment in the comment section, and I thank you so much for your comments, everybody. A lot of you compliment me and say so many kind things about you know my work and what I'm doing here and I really appreciate that. That really gives me much more uh, encouragement to keep painting and staying on YouTube and really working here because it's uh, I'm doing it because I want everyone just to have a great time with their watercolors and learn new things and have fun with it and I enjoy doing it too and it's fun for me. I enjoy it. I get practice here as we're doing these things. I'm learning new things as I go too as well. So we're all the same. We're all just learning as we go and just more practice and more paintings is more experience that we have which makes us better artists. So that's all it is. We're all just here together and I'm just so happy to be able to create these uh, videos for everyone. And thanks again for all that everyone does as far as all the comments and sending me pictures of their paintings and so many of you are doing great work out there beautiful paintings. I see people all the time sending me uh, on my email uh, their paintings uh, that they're working on from our YouTube videos here and they're just looking great. So I just, I realize everyone's getting a lot from our channel here and from what we're doing. So let's keep up the great work and uh, have a lot of fun with this and enjoy. And then here, I, I know in the beginning I kind of covered in the first 10 minutes or so the details of what we're using, our art supplies, because a lot of people always comment and say, hey, Chris, yeah, I am just starting out in watercolor. I, you know, I'd like to know about what brushes you're using, what paints, what brands, what sizes of brushes, all these different things. So that's why I cover that a little bit just in the beginning. And now let's get right into what we're doing here. Uh, we're going to first do our preliminary sketch. So I'm working basically from 
a memory from a painting I recall painting a number of years ago. So I'm just going to try to do this freehand uh, improv. I'm imp improvising right now. I'm not really working from a photograph or a book or a video or of you know something online. So I hope you you just you know I hope you're okay with that. So. The first thing I like to do is do a preliminary sketch, which is a super light sketch, just to get the feel of what I'm going to put on the paper. Let's try it out and see what we're going to do here. So I look right away and I say, okay, my scene's going to be sort of, the horizon line of my scene's going to be about, not quite halfway, about a little bit above a third of the way up the page, like so. And then from there, I'm going to do some interesting... This is going to be like a Western scene, maybe somewhere in a foreign country somewhere, hot, hot country where there's some churches and some steeples and some buildings and some interesting architecture. So that's what we're going to kind of have the feel for. And uh, so I'm just going to do that. And I'm just going to try to get the feel for maybe a steeple up here and uh, some more building shapes over here and then maybe back here we're going to do another we'll do something interesting maybe a, uh, a dome like that Okay, so we do a doll maybe up here, and we have another kind of couple shapes here of these buildings. Okay, that's our preliminary sketch. Can everyone see that? It's light, but you can kind of see how I did that. I just went through it from memory, and then that's all I, I need to do now. Another thing you can sketch in is some foreground. Let's do some foreground. Let's do a uh, stairs. So we're going to have some steps leading up to this. So we're going to have some steps leading up to this. Like that. And we have a wall there, a retaining wall. And then maybe we have another retaining wall here. Like that. And then let's get in some interesting... Um, let's see now. We're going to have to have a doorway over here. Let's put a doorway there, an archway with a door. And then let's do a little tree over here. So sometimes your preliminary sketches can become your final sketch. Sometimes you'll do a preliminary sketch, a really light sketch first, and say, oh, you know what? That's good enough. I don't have to go over this a second time. But sometimes you'll want to go over it a second time too and redraw it again with a darker pencil line. That's up to you. Here I might let this go because we kind of have, a, I already have a good feel for this. It seems like it's going really good for me. So I'm going to try to just go with the flow here. And uh, things are going well in this one. So I'm not going to buck the system here. I'm going to try to stick with what's happening and what's going well for me. I'm not going to say, oh, I must go over this with a darker pencil line after I do this preliminary sketch. I might say, you know what, this preliminary sketch is fine. I'll just use this and just start painting over this. And that's what we'll do because it's really, everything seems to be going good here so far. I don't need to really double back and go over with a pen, another pencil drawing over the top. And we got another... So I'm just doing some trees here, some trunks of trees and trees. 
and that's it. Look at that. So here we have a nice good looking structure, a gorgeous city scene, kind of like a cityscape in like a very hot desert type area where it's this would be all maybe like white stone, like really bright white stone. And so we're going to leave this lots of white paper. We'll have some blue sky behind here and um, some sand colors. And we're going to keep this very abstract. And you'll see how, how it really looks really good. And this is perfect for anyone that's just starting out or if you've been a pro and you've been painting a while, it's fine. You can do this one too. So this is uh, no... No worries with watercolor. You can create this painting whether you just started out or you've been painting five, ten years already. <clears throat> and we're going to use some really basic art tools, which is going to be even better yet because we're going to kind of just prove the point that we can have fun with this medium of watercolor and we don't need to have every fancy type of gimmicky type thing or whatever else we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna have fun just doing it the way we do it all right so we got our sketch done let's get our first wash in of our sky so I'm gonna use fresh clean water so I have fresh clean water in my container you can see that fresh clean water with our um, let's start out Let's do this. Let's make sure when we start out a new painting, let's clean up the palette. Okay, my, my spritzer bottle's running out of water. So I'm going to do this over here. We'll pour some more water into the spritzer bottle. Okay. There we go. little piece of paper towel. I like to tear up my paper towel into small pieces. So if I have one of those interesting rolls of watercolor paper where you have half sheets like this, then I tear it in half again like that. And this way I can serve on paper. And then I just do that. Let's start out with a fresh palette. No paint in there. Just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect just to get our previous paint off from our previous painting. And then let's get started here. Um, you can use a, let's use a square brush, why not? Let's use a, let's see what we have here. Okay, this is a uh, Princeton, of course, Princeton. And this is a uh, 5 eighths inch flat brush, 5 eighths, 5 eighths inch wash. It's called wash, the brush, 5 eighths wash. Princeton Art Brush Company makes it. And this is uh, a flat brush or a square brush. Let's do our sky wash with this. We're just trying this one out. And this is a maybe only about, I bought a pack of five brushes for like five dollars. So this might be like a dollar only. This is only a dollar. It's a synthetic brush, synthetic hairs. Let's try it out. Okay. Oh, let's use some gorgeous blue. Look at that. Lots of water. Let's get some water in there because we're making a sky wash and we don't want to do... So that's it. We have some beautiful blue sky wash like that. Then we're going to go in with some brown just to have a little bit of a... maybe a little bit of orangey red, brown, some cadmium, like some nice light red like that. Maybe some orange. So we'll make a little bit of an orangey warm color just to have that with us when we do our sky wash. We don't want to make it completely blue without any touch of something else. Okay, let's get this on the paper. But before we do that, let's even do this. Let's take our brush. And again, we're working with pure, clean, fresh water. Let's get some 
fresh clean water on the paper. Not everywhere, but some places. Let's do that. Let's splash on some water here. Okay, now the next thing. We're going to splash on some water, right, on the paper, up in the high portions of our paper. Some Get some fresh clean water on there, and then this is the next step that's really important. Take your, uh, let's use our other brush, let's use our number eight. Number eight, Princeton round brush. Let's go carefully around and just dampen the paper around the tops of the buildings. So you just want to dampen the paper around the tops of the buildings where that pencil line is, but don't go into the buildings. Go around the buildings to dampen the paper so that, so let's do that. Let's go all the way around the edge of where we did our pencil line. There we go. That's all you have to do. Very simple, right? Is that simple or what? You're just going around the pencil line where you drew the buildings and you don't want to go inside the pencil line. You want to stay on the outside of the pencil line like so, just like this. Just like that. Perfect. Look at that. Splash a little more clean water on there. Make sure you do it all. If you're unsure that you missed a spot, go over it again. Like that. Okay, I think I have everything. Perfect. Now you might see some shadow areas. You could put a little bit of water in those areas if you want. But your best bet is just to stay along the outside edge the whole way around. Like that. Right? And I might add a little bit extra. Okay, perfect. Now what's next? Simple. We get our flat brush again. Our square brush. 5 eighths inch. And let's get that blue and start putting in that sky wash. Look at that. Oh, wow. You just put it on and it does all the work for you. And then you just dab along. Maybe you add some of that warmer color here and there. Look at that. Maybe some orange, yellow, orange, brown. Kind of mix up a warm color there. And that's all you're doing is getting in some really beautiful colors. Some really... And you might, as you'll see here, we're going to go right around. So you're just going to go right around your subject matter. Just like that. Pick up some more color, get that on the paper. Some warm too. You don't want to have it all just blue, plain old blue. You know, you add your little touches of some warm in there, warm and cool everywhere. You might take some straight paint and just go, oh, look at that. Ooh. Have a good time with this. Get some color on there, right? Wow, look at that. Then you see that I'm working around the edges where the buildings are. This here is a shadow. If something gets out of control, you just have no problem. You take a, some tissue, take some tissue, fold it up, and just dab it up like that. But we wanted this little bit of shadow here along this edge here, and we wanted some warm and cool. We don't want just cool blue. We want some warm and cool. So we're going to do that. We're going to bring some cool shadows, warm and cool shadows along this area down here, like that. <clears throat> Look at that, wow, phenomenal. Over here too, some warm and cool. There's a bit of shadow over here. 
And there's some more shadow over here too. So you're just kind of putting in some shadowing, some of that sky wash. I'm trying to pull that back up in the sky a little bit. You don't want to do too much messing around though once you get your wash on the paper. You have to let it just dry and go with it. But let's do that. Let's get a let's see here. We went over that too much. There we go. We can fix that up like that. And then we have a little bit of light shadow there. So now you're going to see that I'm going to try to mix in some shadowing over here, over there, everywhere. Having fun with this. So the basic idea is start out with just the sky wash and then little by little add in some areas that you see that are shadows. So you'll just work from this and try to do the same thing I'm doing. Try to match what I'm doing right now. Pause the video when, when you come back and look at this a second time. You're going to want to pause that video and watch it a second time so that you can kind of see how I'm doing everything. And this here is a shadow along the side here. I'm going to soften that up a little bit there. Then I can blot up a little bit. You can blot up a little bit here. Okay, now here if you see some big puddles of water, you can take some paper towel. This is important to use paper towel. Paper towel, because it's absorbent and it'll pick up that water puddle. So you just take it and just touch it down. And there you go, you can lift up a puddle that's getting out of control because you don't want to have a puddle sitting on there too long. You take your paper towel and you just touch it lightly to the paper. And there you go, and over here too. Perfect, and over here as well. See how that just lifts it up, that puddle and that one too? There you go, now puddles, puddle problem solved. There we go. Okay, so we've been working like 20 minutes already, but we have to still, let's keep working a little bit. So we have some of that warm color there. We're still working with our warms and cools. Um, what else do we have here? We have some more shadowing here. This is like kind of, a, let's go with some warmer. Orange, 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 more orange, yellow. Rinse my brush, dry it off on a paper towel or tissue, and then I can get a little more warm here. Like that. And we're going to do some really cool stuff in the next part coming up. We're going to take a break though now. But you can kind of see now I'm using some of that orange and brown and orange and brown and yellow to get some of that more uh, sandy warm color like stones and deserty type feel. And I'm going to splash on some little bit of paint for that sand kind of feel. And I'm going to add a little bit more. Just like that. Just a couple of... Okay. Perfect. We're going to come back and we're just going to add a few more darks to this and you'll see how it livens everything up and we'll have a completed painting. So we didn't have to work too hard on this one. This one was really fun. You just have to um, trust, the, trust the way we're applying our techniques and methods here and you'll have it. It won't be a problem. If you have some messy looking washes throughout this painting here and there, just let it be. Don't try going back and fixing it unless it's 100% dry. But even then, probably you don't want to go back and fix too much stuff. Just let it, let it be the way it is. It'll be a practice run. You can do another one after this one or another two or three after this one, okay? So don't get frustrated if some of the washes look a little funny, some things look a little bit uh, crazy with the washes getting uh, a little messy. Don't worry about it. You kind of have the general idea of how we're doing this. Getting that wash down first, and then we're going to do the darks next. And the very first thing we did was we did our sketch. So really it's a three-part three, you know, three, 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 
three parts to this process. One, sketch, we get that done, that's one. Two, we get this first wash, this first glazing on with the light washes of, of blue. And then we have some warmer mixes too. We wanna to add warm and cool at the same time. Some brown, some yellow, some orange mixed in with the blue here and there. Give it a nice modulation of warm and cool. Once you have that down, we're gonna to go to our third part next, which is gonna be, we're gonna add in some darks here. And that's all we have to do is add in some darks and we'll be complete. And you'll see how everything comes together and looks absolutely uh, exciting with the darks in there once we're completed with letting this dry. So that's the key here, let this part dry now. So your first glazing that you put over this painting, once you're done with your sketch, you have to let this dry 100%. Like if you have to use a blow dryer, use a blow dryer, or if you can, you have to wait at least a couple hours, two or three hours maybe, or maybe an hour. You have to you touch it and test it and say, okay, is this dry? You have to really make sure it's really dry before you go back in and start working again, although it's gonna give you troubles if you don't, <laughs> okay? So don't let your watercolors give you troubles. You're gonna do it the right way so you won't have any problems, all right? Okay, we'll be right back. Get excited, we're gonna do the final darks and it's gonna look great. You're gonna have so much fun putting in these last bits of darks on your painting and it'll look just ex excellent and you'll be happy, all right? We'll be right back. Okay, we're getting back started again. We're gonna finish up our dark darks in this painting, and that'll be really the final uh, step in this painting, actually. I always mention uh, on my videos, hey, please, uh, if you can, hit that subscribe button down here on the right-hand side below, below the screen over here on this right-hand side, you're gonna see a subscribe button. Please hit the subscribe button. Join along with us every week, week after week, month after month, and year after year. We're gonna be here on YouTube for you painting everything watercolor, drawing and painting watercolor, and we do every type of subject matter. So this time we might be doing a desert scene with a, some architecture, some old ruins, some architecture. Maybe next week we're gonna do some boats, some beautiful boats in the ocean. After that, we might do some flowers. We're always doing new material, new subject matter, but we're always doing everything watercolor. So always remember, if you're subscribing here, you're in a great place because you're always gonna be learning the basic fundamental techniques of watercolor over and over and over again, no matter what I'm painting here, no matter what we're painting here, um, it's always gonna be the same idea. We're doing the same methods and techniques. We're just changing uh, what we might be painting, but that's really kind of irrelevant. If you're just watching week after week, you'll be hearing the same terms, the same, you'll be seeing the same methods, the same techniques, and you can apply that to whatever your favorite subject matter is. Maybe you're a watercolor artist and you're saying to yourself, I'm doing nothing but flower paintings. Fantastic, that's a good, maybe that's a really great um, uh, technique and a, and a great um, game plan to do. If you're just starting out maybe and you've only been painting a couple months or something and you just wanna focus on one subject matter, that's great, you could do that. You could just do nothing but flowers for a couple of years and master flowers and have a real fun time and all that. And then you can move on to something else you like. So that's always a good um, recipe if you want, let's say, if you wanna just focus on one subject matter, or you can just maybe you're someone else you like variety. So you wanna do everything. You wanna do these type of scenes here, like in the countryside with some architectural ruins. And then you wanna do flowers and you wanna do boats. You wanna do everything. Great. You suit what's best for you. You're the watercolor artist. You do it the way you wanna do it. I'm just kinda of giving you the basics of it and say, hey, if you're subscribing and you're here and you're clicked on our this channel here, we're here all the time doing the same uh, format, which is watercolors, week after week, month after month, and year after year. And if you stick with us, you're gonna learn and your paintings are gonna look great. They're gonna look so much better as you follow us and work along with us here. So let's continue to work here and we'll have a great time of it. So we're gonna take our watercolor brush here. Again, we're gonna use our Simmons here, our Simply Simmons number six round brush. And uh, maybe we'll use our number uh, eight as well. Maybe we'll use our number eight actually. We use a number eight Princeton Neptune round brush, synthetic, it's got a really nice point. And now here we're gonna stick with the really, really dark black paint no water, just black paint straight out of that well here. And then maybe we'll add, we'll rinse the brush so we don't contaminate everything. And then we'll um, dry off some of that water off the brush once we rinse it. Then we'll go in and get some brown. We want to mix some brown in with the black. 
so we have a bit of a, and then let's add a little bit of red. We'll rinse off our brush, take a little bit of the water off the brush, go in to get some red. So we have a black that becomes modulated with some reds and some browns, maybe some orange in there too. So it just isn't a, uh, it's a, it's a black with some other colors mixed in just to, and even some blue. Maybe some purple. Let's put some purple in there. So it's going to have a little bit of different feel to it. Different mixtures of colors within that dark, dark black. Okay, so let's do that. So now we're just going to go around here. This is 100% dry now. That's the key here when you're coming back in to do your final darks. Remember, this is a three-point process. One, pencil sketch. We did our pencil sketch. Pencil sketch. We did that all. Completed the pencil sketch. Done. Two, we did our light wash of blue with some brown and orange and yellow to add some warm and cool to the blue, but mostly predominantly blue wash on the top here. You get that all flowing down. One of the keys in part two is you're going to go around first before you start putting in your blue wash. You're going to go around all of the buildings uh, with a damp brush with clean water so that you make a damp wet line around all of your silhouette of your buildings so that your watercolor flow doesn't flow into all of your buildings and kind of ruin that effect of that nice light colored uh, structures along this scene here. So that's important. And then once you have your blue wash, your warm and cool blue washes, we let this dry 100%. If you have to use a blow dryer to dry it, you can do that or you can let it sit. Maybe you can overnight, you can let it sit overnight and come back the next day and do your darks now like we're going to do. Whatever you want to do. You're the artist. You decide how you're going to do it. But remember, once your washes of light blue sky wash and shadow washes on the paper are on this paper, you have to let it dry 100%. It's got to be 100% dry before you come back and start doing the darks. Okay? That's the only thing. Okay, and there we go. Now we're going to do some darks. Okay, now I'm going to do that. And then maybe I'll do a little. So here and there you can add a little bit of water to the wash just to dry off a little bit of the paint. If you have to, you can blot up, blot up some. Light's coming from this direction, so the shadows are on the left-hand side. That's all. We're just going to get these really interesting darks in here. Nothing, nothing too fancy here. Here we're going to have this as a, a rectangle. Here you don't want to go with perfection. Okay, and more darks here. Again, we're doing all darks. So we're going to do a window over here or two. There's a couple of... And then some darks there. And then this is... There's a dark doorway here. You can go in and get some red some reds and some oranges and yellows. Maybe make some colors here and there just a little bit to spice it up. And uh, here we have, we're going to do another. There's a doorway over here. 
and maybe another couple windows. So you do a couple little spots of windows and uh, let's see what else we have here. Let's do another. And what's fun about this is you're just doing it and you don't have to be so accurate. You're just making window shapes, basically rectangular shapes. So when you're making window shapes, as long as you're making a rectangular shape like that, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Anything like that, you're good. You can do these window shapes like this. You know, a door shape, maybe like that. Probably the most important thing is to get the top edge a little bit more square, and then the rest can kind of just flow on down. Windows, doors, shadow lines. Okay, and then uh, here we have a little more shadowing. So here you can just put some spots of dark for shadows here. We're going to do some trees next, so we're going to keep working along this here, and we're going to have some shadow there. We're going to have some shadow here on the stairs. So we pick up some more of those darks, like that. I rinse off my brush, take a little water off on the tissue, and then you can blend in that shadow color like so. And you just put in some steps like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. And then here we'll do a dark wall here. So there's going to be black, brown. Let's use that. some extra wash there, like that. I lift up a little bit with the tissue, then I start a new tissue. Once your tissue gets a little bit, uh, um, like after you've done some blotting and blotting up color and your tissue gets f full of colors, then you just grab a new one. You don't want to keep using the same tissue over and over and over again because that'll actually uh, cause a problem. A couple more splashes here and there like that. And um, we're going to do a couple more like here. I'm going to just do a little bit of a wash like that, just coming in this way. A little bit of a directional line like that. You can blot up here and there if you want just to. A little bit there, and there's another, maybe something like that. So we're just trying to get some interesting some interesting movement in the painting, some lines here, that's all. There we go. And I think that's really looking pretty good. There might be another bit of And a little more here, just a little bit of shadow. Shadow movements here. The only thing with that is we said the light's coming from the light's coming from this way across the scene, so we're gonna to want to make our shadows from the trees going to the left. So that's something important we have to remember. So try to remember where your um, the shadows are and where the light is okay everybody let's take a quick break we're gonna come back and do our last few bits of detail we're gonna do the trees in this scene that's gonna make it all come together really nice 
because it's sort of a little bit bland right now, a little bit plain with the buildings. We're going to add some of these trees that we did draw in with our pencil sketch, as you saw here. So here and here we have our trees, one, two, three, and maybe we'll make another one over here, four. So maybe we'll make four, three or four or five trees here and there, maybe even one in the foreground, really, really large um, to kind of set the scene back. We'll see what we're going to do here. Maybe we'll just leave it the way it is. Well, let's uh, take a break. It's always good to take breaks. I always uh, say breaks are really uh, a great way to help relax, renew your concentration, and then when you come back and look at your painting, you might say, oh, this is something I want to do next. Uh, this is something I don't want to do next, although I thought I did want to do that before. So you'll game plan a lot more. So always remember that term game planning. You want a game plan as you're going painting your watercolors. You want a game plan as you go. You got to be quick on your feet with watercolors and you got to say to yourself, okay, I thought I was going to do that before, but now I'm going to do this because I think it's going to look a lot better. So always be willing to change a little bit here and there if you need to. You're the artist. You'll figure it out as you go. And that's always keep yourself, uh, you know, keep yourself on your toes, keep yourself light on your feet to try to go with the flow of your painting and see what it needs, what it doesn't need. Sometimes you're going to need to stop and not do any more work to your painting and let it be a little bit unfinished. And it might look better that way versus over finishing your painting. So these are all things you learn as you go as a watercolor artist. But let's take a break and we'll come right back and we'll finish up with a couple more gorgeous looking trees here in this painting. And I think that'll be all we need to have it look absolutely fantastic and complete. All right. Hey, we're back. We just took a quick break. It's great to take breaks. You'll renew your uh, concentration level. You'll come back. You'll game plan a little more when you come back to your painting. Before you start up again, you're going to stop and look and say, oh, what am I going to do different here? Or maybe should I do this or that? Or you'll ask questions more. More, more questions you're going to ask, the better your painting is going to look. So here uh, we're going to just finish up. We're going to actually just do our um, maybe some trees here. Let's just do our trees. So we're going to get some more darks here. We're going to use really, really dark black with a little bit of brown mixed in there. Maybe a little bit of purple. And I think we should be good. And then we're going to use our tissues to dry off our brush. So when you're doing fine uh, shapes like twigs, limbs, trunks of trees, when you pick up your paint like this, you're going to want to check off a little bit of paint on your tissue first because a lot of times you'll pick up a lot of paint and water in there and then when you go to do your fine very very fine lines it's going to flood out onto your paper and you won't get those fine lines you need so to get your fine lines when you're doing your watercolor paintings remember this it's a real critical uh, technique you get your paint your dark paint onto your brush take some of that paint and water off your brush on a tissue then go in and do your your, your tree trunks and things. Okay, that's just really a simple. So here we're just going to do Okay, there we go. That's one tree we have in there. Let's do this one here. We'll do our shadows on our tree next once we're done with our trees. And I'm just flicking them on. I'm not doing too much fussing around here. See, I'm just kind of flicking the brush on there. Maybe one branch goes over this way, but maybe the prevailing winds are this way. There we go. Let's do one over here. And I have those pencil lines I did earlier. That's going to give me a a guide as to where my branches go and good and then again maybe one one small tree over here let's do this over here Looks good. 
little bit of purple in there for some shadow. Let's make some shadow color like that. Purple, maybe a little bit of orange. Like this. I'm just going to make a little shadow colors here. Like that. We have the shadows on the left. And I think that's good, everybody. Let's leave it at this. Let's not keep overworking it too much. Let's leave it as it is. I think that looks fine. So we'll, we'll also notice that when you're when you're painting, it's always going to look better once you're finished painting. When you're peeling off your tape, you're going to have a nice, beautiful, crisp white border around your painting. And that looks much like a uh, mat or a frame. So then you'll see that it takes on a new look. So as I peel off the tape here, you'll see. It's going to look much more finished. You'll see the true essence of what it's going to look like if you're, to, if you're going to put a mat and a frame on it. I suggest everybody, when you have a good painting that comes out really nice or a, a composition that you paint, uh, you want to definitely mat and frame it. You can always take it out of the mat and frame later and put another one in there. And there we have it. I think that looks fine. You know, we could always put something else in but sometimes when you under finish things it does look kind of better we could add something else to this but I think we're actually in pretty good shape here it looks pretty good um, it's very loose very fun very free it's kind of abstracty it's not too detailed like a hundred percent nailed down everything perfect it's kind of like free looking and the showcasing of the watercolor medium itself is is evident here we got lots of gorgeous washes of watercolor paint in the sky and in the foreground, we have some splashing. We have some light, fun tree shapes here. Nice shadowing that blends in with the sky colors. It's got a real nice uh, unified feel to it. And I hope uh, you're going to try this at home. Enjoy it. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. And again, thanks so much for coming along here with us on our watercolor journey. We're going to create lots more paintings just like this uh, as we go forward. So let's have fun keep working and uh, we'll uh, see you very, very, very soon. Bye-bye.